To start this next section, I'd like to do a quick overview, uh, recall if you will, of polar coordinates. So in our rectangular coordinate system, when we want to refer to an ordered pair, typically what we'll do is we will assign from the origin two quantities. And the two quantities that we'll do will be a horizontal displacement and a vertical displacement, referring to those as x and y. Whereas in the polar coordinate system, rather than referring to it as an origin, we refer to it as a pole. The distance from the pole out to a certain point was referred to as r, and the associated angle created at the pole with the polar axis, or horizontal axis, would be the angle theta. Now if we were to overlay these on each other, we would have an x and a y and an r and a theta. So in polar coordinates we would typically use r and theta for this. So the idea behind polar coordinates is that we are taking two distance or displacement quantities and turning it into one distance or one displacement and one angle. Now the reason that I ask you to recall these things is because we're going to be doing this now in three dimensions. There are four important conversions to know as far as polar coordinates are concerned. Uh, based on a little bit of right triangle trigonometry over here, x is equal to r times the cosine of theta, y is equal to r times the sine of theta, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, and tangent of theta would be y over x. Now in polar coordinates, representations are not unique. Now by that I mean rather than saying, you know, let's do a quadrant one angle and a positive displacement, I could do a quadrant three angle and do a negative displacement and still be going in the same direction. That's why rather than saying that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, we leave it in this form. Rather than saying that theta is equal to the arc tangent of y over x, um, we just leave it as is. Now with that in mind, converting three dimensions to polar coordinates. Um, the first coordinate system that we're going to introduce for three dimensions is exactly polar coordinates where we leave the z as is. So what we're used to doing in three dimensions when we refer to, say, a point that's out this way, we'll have a z coordinate associated with it, an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, if we just kind of go back to basics here. So we will bring all of these back in, and this is what we did back in the first section that we covered. So x-coordinate, y-coordinate, z-coordinate. So this would be an x-distance here, a y-distance here, and a z-distance here. So the first thing we're going to do is take x and y and simply convert x and y into polar coordinates. So starting from the origin, or the pole, we'll draw a line that goes directly out to the point that's directly below here, and we'll refer to this as r. The angle that gets created with the positive x-axis, that's going to be theta. So what we would do is we would say that the ordered triple xyz is going to be converted into the ordered triple r theta z through the use of the following conversions. x is going to be equal to r times the cosine of theta, y is equal to r times the sine of theta, and for z there is no conversion whatsoever. So frequently you'll see it written in this form where we actually state that z is just going to stay as z. Now one advantage, one big advantage that we got from polar coordinates is that round things were a lot easier to represent. In fact, r equals a constant was a circle. Now if we take the concept of a circle and extend it into three dimensions, in the xy plane we're going to get circles, and in the z direction we're just going to get straight up and down. What I have just described is, hang on, how do you spell things? There we go. We refer to this as the cylindrical coordinate system. cylindrical coordinate system. Sorry, my handwriting is really sloppy today for some reason. 
But yeah, cylindrical coordinate system because if we have r equals a constant, we'll refer to this as a, this would be a right circular cylinder with a radius equal to a. So yeah, um, more examples on that in the next video.